And we turn now to Matt Sapala. He is the money smart guy who joins us now with ways to save cash somewhere in our daily lives. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. How can I help you save money at gas? and understand how to fight inflation in 2022. Well, earlier this morning, I was on News Nation Now TV discussing gas prices and inflation. And just like any TV segment, I only had four or five minutes to explain it, but I thought it's such a worthy topic, such a worthy subject to unpack, to make sure you do everything you can to put more dollars back into your pockets outside of everybody else. What is the best way drivers can save money on gas? Two ways to play this, this game. Two ways to play the money game. Offense or defense? Defense or offense, you choose. Now, I personally like offense better. Why? Because I control the tempo. I bring the punch to the game, right? I don't like defense because it's always reactive. It's always somebody's got to make a move first. Administration's got to make a move first. The president's got to make a move first. The government's got to make a move first. Your employer has to make a move first. Somebody else has to make a move first. And then you react. I don't like that. I love bringing the fight. I love bring the punch first. First to strike, first to, right? The whole thing, first to fight. I like to do that for, I like playing offense. But if you're out there, there's nobody's teaching you the rules of the money game, we'll show you some thoughts here on how to play defense, and then we'll talk about offense. So, to save money on gas, to save money on things that you got going on right now. Number one, we can go back to carpooling. You gotta consolidate who you go to work with. If you have a business, you can pick up your employees. We all chip in for gas together. Consider really consolidating your errands along with your job. So therefore, in one fell swoop, you can knock a lot of errands without burning unnecessary gas. Ah, going back to carpooling, it's something we forgot about during, during the pandemic, I think. Belize, the 100% burden of gas prices is not on you. Yeah, you got to take a little bit more time to pick up everybody. You got to wake up a little bit more earlier, pick up everybody, go to work, and you got to wait in everybody to go back home. But at least you save money at the gas prices. You're not having to shell out more money out of your pocket. To, uh, to, to, to spend on gas. Number two, you can take public transportation. I grew up on buses and trains growing up in the city of Chicago, okay? How many of you were raised on public transportation? I still remember my bus numbers. I remember the 307 bus on Harlem, the 302-322 bus on Cermak Road going east and west. I still remember those, but I grew up without a car. I remember when public tra uh, transportation was a dollar, dollar 25 for transfer. How many of you guys remember those days? But that's one way to go about it. Do it. Park the car and not take it out for another month, two months, three months, whatever, but take public transportation all over again. I remember my father, we had a car. This is a, the 70s and the 80s, 80s and the 90s. I remember my father would walk the four blocks. He parked the car because he couldn't afford the gas prices in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Go figure. How much would you love to pay the gas prices in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Well, that was my dad, but he wasn't paying for the cost of gas even back then. So he'd park the car, only take the car out on weekends or in evenings, but he walked the four, blo four blocks to the, uh, to the train station, take it to downtown Chicago, work was done, he takes the train back, walks the four blocks back home, but at least the car was in the garage, okay? It was in the side of the street, but public transportation is an option. Number three, restricted use, which is a variation where I just explained what my father did when I was growing up. You have selected times where you take the car out, uh, uh, honey, can you drop me off at work? Uh, 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 husband, drop me off at work. Wife, drop me off at work. Restricted use of your car. In other words, you've lost your freedom now by just having a car because of higher gas prices, but at least less, less money out of your pocket for gas. Number four, you can download these apps like Waze and Gas Buddy. Obviously that app uh, early in, that, uh, in the segment there was Gas Buddy that you can use to check the check the uh, gas price around your neighborhood. By the way, I, I grew up in a neighborhood where mom said, hey, you know, we gotta drive. Five blocks this way, a quarter mile this way to just save another five or 10 cents of gas, but all alone burn, burning that savings back on the way home. Now, I don't know if you grew up in neighborhoods like mine or with parents like mine, but my parents would go way out of their way, a quarter mile away. They go an eighth of the mile away. They go another six blocks, eight blocks, even though it take another five minutes to get there into the city of Chicago, just to get cheaper gas for two, three, four cents a gallon. For five cents a, a cheaper a gallon, they go way out of their way without real without realizing that they're actually burning off the savings, they're driving off the savings, they're consuming the savings by having to drive that extra distance just to get cheaper gas. But if you feel better doing that way, you have a little bit more peace of mind doing it that way, well, go to these apps like Gas Buddy, 
and ways to find the areas where you can get, uh, find cheaper gas. Another way to do this also, if when people have a Sam's Club membership or a Walmart uh, or a Costco membership or a, a grocery store, chances are those gas prices also are uh, somewhat less expensive than going to your typical uh, Amco station or Shell station. They have uh, grocery store chains that have gas prices, which is probably less than your Amco or Shell or Exxon mobile stations, okay? So there's one area of saving gas. Not very creative, not very, you know, your reactive situation kind of settle for what's out there. That's why I don't like defense. Just keep this in mind. He or she that controls your income, here's a solution. He or she that controls your income, controls your decisions, which controls your life. So what am I getting at? The point of this whole video is so therefore you can play offense. You can take the fight to the game. You can start winning the money game. So let's take a look at the reality. Let's take a look at the reality here of gas prices today. Okay, before gas prices were, let's say for example, $3.50 a gallon. How would you love to have gas prices back to $3.50 a gallon? I was just in California last week. Gas prices were at five bucks, six bucks. I hear now it's like seven bucks a gallon. But imagine last year, could you remember those days, pandemic days even, pre-pandemic days? Gas prices are three dollars and fifty cents a gallon. Well, let's do the math. If you have a, if a you have a car, I have an SUV. Twenty six gallons it takes. Some of you guys have twenty two gallon tanks. Some of you guys have eighteen gallon tanks. I'm just using a twenty six gallon full tank. So for three dollars and fifty cents a gallon, for twenty six gallons a full tank of gas, it costs me ninety one dollars for a full tank of gas. I'm curious. In your neck of the woods, put it in the comment section below. What's a full tank of gas costs, cost you in your city and state? Are you East Coast? Are you West Coast? Are you North? Are you South? What does it cost for you to fill up the gas in your neck of the woods? I'm curious. We're going to be reading the comment section below and we'll comment when you respond. But for me, in this situation, $3.50 a gallon before, 26 gallons, full tank, $91 for a full tank of gas. Now, if you multiply that by four weeks, because that's how often I need to fill my car back up. Once a week, I need to fill my car back up based on the driving that I'm doing. Well, that's $364 a month in gas. It's kind of like a car payment, right? $364 a month in gas, you multiply it by 12 months. In order for me to transport myself, to commute back and forth to where I want to go, it costs me $4,368 $3 a year for gas. Okay, that was before. What about today? Well, let's round up or down to $5 a gallon. Again, what's the cost of gas of gallon per, uh, cost of gas per gallon in your neck of the woods? So today, it went up from $3.50 a gallon to $5 a gallon. Let's take a look at this. $5 again, same, same tank of gas, 26 gallons, full tank of gas. Instead of it costing $3.64, it now costs, it now costs me uh, $130 to fill up a tank of gas. $130 versus $91 for fill up my car with gas. It went up, went from 91 bucks a gallon to 130 bucks a gallon per week. Now, if I have four weeks, that's $520 per month. It went up from $364 a month now to $520 a month for the same full tank of gas. Multiply that by 12 months. Now it's costing me $6,240 per year for gas to transport myself, to commute myself to and fro. Cost me $6,240 for gas. Now, if you do the math, today costs $6,240 for gas. Before, it was $4,368. It's a difference of $1,872 per year. Divide, divide that per 12, uh, by 12 months, it's a difference of $156 of gas per month. In other words, the, if you're using this type of math, you're spending another 150 bucks, 125 bucks, 200 bucks a month for gas. But some of you guys are saying, well, that's not so much of a big deal. For some people, it's not so, that much of a big deal. But for most people, that's another 156 bucks extra that you can use to pay down debt. That's another $156 you can use a month to pay off your credit cards. It's not $156 a month you can use to buy life insurance or to save in your 401k plan or, or potentially put down as a down payment to buy more real estate, but instead, it's going to where? Gas? Well, gas is an only, it's one of the areas of indication of the cost of living, of inflation. Because this not only is just a singular area of our budget, 
that we have to worry about. It's going to affect our food, the cost of gallon of milk, because here's why. If it costs more for gas for us, what about the cost of gas for your airplanes, for your public transportation, for, uh, uh, for Uber, for people delivering you things, Amazon delivering your packages? They have to bake that extra cost into things that you normally receive. Do you like that? See, this is a spillover into a lot of things. Uh, by the way, I haven't even talked about your personal budget. If this is going up, what else is going up in your life? Inflation is affecting child care, affecting housing, affecting cost of buying a car, let alone fueling it. All the areas of your life are costing more money. So how do you get ahead? By playing defense? I was working three jobs. G F Lube hood technician. I was working as a, 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 a waiter and was working as a YMC lifeguard. YMC lifeguard. But here's a problem with getting a second or third job. The more income you make through a second or third job, what's the first thing they take out of your paycheck still? Same thing as the first job. They take out what? Taxes. So they take out taxes, and like, how do I get ahead? I'm making more money, but the more money I make, the more they take out in taxes. Well, that's why you need to start a, boom, side business. And that, that's so useful because so many people during the pandemic have, have left their jobs and started their own businesses. It's been a, a major shift, this great resignation. Hey, home-based business, let me share with you a book that, I, that I've encouraged everybody to read. My favorite guy here, CPA, CPA attorney. Get this, by the way, I make no money by sharing you this book. This is not an affiliate link. Get this book by Sandy Botkin. He's a CPA, an attorney, used to train IRS agents. And... Uh, Every year he updates this book. Lower your taxes big time. I suggest you get this book. If you go to chapter one of this book, okay, if you go to chapter one of this book, number one, why you would be brain dead not to start a home-based business if you don't already have one. Now, let me, let me start by saying, you can cut lawns, you can tutor, you can teach, teach music lessons, you can teach old guys like me how to do TikTok and uh, social media on a part-time basis. You don't have to quit your full-time job just to have a home-based business, okay? Now, with that being said, ask and find ways for you to get paid as a gig or as an independent contractor. This is the era of the great reset or the great resignation. Find ways to get paid as an independent contractor by getting side jobs. Not a second job, a side job, a side business, a home-based business. Because one of the areas here of the tax code opens up to you. Because there's two major tax codes, one for the informed and one for the uninformed. Let me dive down deeper. The two tax codes, one for the employed, you get a, you get a paycheck from somebody, you have a gross pay, they have a net pay, that's called being employed. You clock in, clock out, you have a salary, you're employed, that's, well, that's one tax code. Then the second tax code is those who are self-employed or those who are employers or are business owners. You hire people. There's another area of the tax code that opens up. And guess what the IRS wants to incentivize? More employees or more employers? Guess what they want to incentivize? That's correct. They want to incentivize more employers, creators, generators. Why? Because you create employees. You create jobs. You create through innovation. Because if... In if in, uh, individuals don't become entrepreneurs, if they don't create it, guess who has to create it? The government, and the government is in the, in the business of creation. The last time I checked, I don't want my government worrying about my health care. And I'm a veteran, and I say that, the VA, oh my gosh, every, every veteran knows what I'm talking about. I, imagine you being treated for your health care is the same way you get treated at the DMV for your heart attack. Anyway, that's another story, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. Let's get back to the basics here of what this video is all about. And one of the areas of these tax codes for the self employed business owners, number three, cars have loads and loads and loads of tax deductions for entrepreneurs, for self-employed, for those that have a gig, for those that have a side business. You can operate your side business five hours a week, 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week. You don't have to do full-time entrepreneurship. As long as you have some form of side business, you're okay. So what's some of the tax deductions you can have, and why should these tax deductions matter to you? Because tax deductions mean to you that less money out of your pocket and more money in your pocket. 
What am I talking about? Things such as gas and oil. When's the last time I went to Jiffy Lube and wrote off your taxes if you're an employee, you don't have a side business? Never. You can't write off your repairs. You can't write off your washes and waxes. You can't write off the miles that you drive in your car. You can't, you can't write off your deductions on your depreciation. But guess what you can do when you're an entrepreneur? You can write off all of these things as an entrepreneur if you use your vehicle, your personal vehicle for business use. Of course, you got to you got to uh, keep good records. Of course, you got to track your mileage. Of course, you got to track these things. And by the way, I say that, and my disclaimer is this: check with your tax professional, just like I do. I'm not a tax expert. I'm not a CPA. I'm not an accountant. However, working with my CPA and accountant over the last 23 years has opened my eyes up to a whole nother world of income tax deduction. Because guys like me, they go from nothing to something. They go from rags to riches. Guys like me are always looking for ways to minimize and or legally and ethically eliminate income taxes based on the letters of the law. So therefore, if you consider doing a side business, you can, again, lawn care services. You can paint. You can be a painter. You know, you can have a, uh, for example, I, 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 I uh, enjoy collecting uh, sports cards. It can be a hobby that you turn into a profitable hobby, which turns into a business. You can cut hair. You can do hair. Ladies, you can do facials, lashes, nails. That's a side business. You rent it out of your car, mobile, service, show up, pop up. You do somebody's eyebrows, lashes, hair, nails, waxes, facials, whatever. That's a business. That will qualify for this conversation of having tax deduction. And if you need your car, to do it, well, guess what? Your card now has become a major source of deduction. Let me, let me share with you a chapter here of this book that you probably want to pick up. And uh, based on whoever picks this up, this book actually, if you're watching this video right now, it's, Matt, how do I get this book? Well, I'll give you a second here. You might get this book from me, from my desk to your desk, signed by the author, okay? I'll show you at the end of this video how you can get it. But chapter five, how to turn your car into a tax deductible gold mine. Guys, please pick this book up. I'm not, again, this is not an affiliate link. I make no money by selling you this book, but I, but I want you to get educated. This is the reason why the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Guys, I got no college degree, but I just know what questions to ask and I know who to ask. Why? Because I got a dream, I got to go, just like I know many of you are watching this video, right? you got a dream, you got to go. You want to go somewhere, yes? Well, you have to be educated. You got to be aware of what you don't know, what you do know. And you got to find the people that can help you get along there and get, uh, help you get there. Um, number four, because if you are able to start a side business, understand the task code, and you're able to also understand what deductions you can have, you don't have to wait until the end of the year because right now it's tax season. You don't have to wait until the end of the year to get your tax refund back from Uncle Sam. And by the way, word around the block is that Uncle Sam is behind on getting you tax refunds. I think they're about 30 days behind. So if you're waiting for your tax refund, by the way, why did it say tax refund? Keyword, refund. What happens when you get refunded something? It's because you overpaid to begin with. So if you get a tax refund, that means you overpaid your taxes. Really? It's not a bonus check from the government? No, a tax refund is not a bonus check from the government. In other words, it means you overpaid your taxes to begin with, and they collected that overpayment. The Uncle Sam Treasury Department collected that overpayment in taxes. They used that money throughout the year to earn interest on that money, to create usage of that money, and they paid you zero interest for using your money. Flip that around. Let's say you owed the IRS money. They charge you penalties. They charge you taxes. They, they charge you additional interest on top of the taxes that you owe. You might as well be on the uh, up and up about it. So you can go ahead and adjust your W-4 by the way, if you just Google IRS W-4 withholding, it's going to show you on the IRS's website, you punch in all your information from your check stubs into the W-4. Just if you, if you will Google IRS W-4 withholding calculator, okay? W-4 withholding calculator, if you have a side business, you can learn how to adjust your withholdings. Because what I'm talking about, you, you file married and four married and six, or single and one, or single and three. That's what I'm talking about, you guys know what I'm talking about? Single and three, or single and four, married and three, married and six. That's what I'm, 
that's why I'm suggesting you, for you to actually figure out what you're supposed to add in that form so you can refill out a do new W-4. So immediately at your primary job, more of your gross pay is now in your check and your net pay. Does it make sense? So your employer to increase your take home pay because you're asking your employee to take less out of your taxes because you're now you're creatively finding out ways to legally find ways to get more of your paycheck from your full-time job back into your net pay because you now have a side business side business but if you don't have a side business you can't do this if you don't create a side house you can't do all this but it's up to you what do you want to do in 2022 you want to play defense or you can play offense did you ever wonder why throughout this whole entire pandemic even why the rich continue to get rich why the middle class and poor got poor do you think the rich was waiting around for stimulus checks of course not why because our entire life is dedicated to no longer playing defense but playing offense by the way defense is important of course but more important is how you play the game and I'm curious on how you're playing the game. I'm curious on how you're going about right now attacking when things are attacking your finances. How do you go about making the most of what you have? Well, if you don't have people helping you and teaching you this, I'm glad you're watching this live video right now. My Facebook page, my YouTube channel is dedicated to helping you think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, so that for one day you become the first family first family member your entire last name to become a first generation cash flow millionaire i would love to know your thoughts i would love to know your feedback maybe we use those thoughts and feedbacks and questions in the next episode you agree with me you don't agree with me you have some follow-ups please put it in the comment section well, there's only so much i can do here in the video but the next video will help you prepare with your feedback to further educate and guide you down the road that being said guys if you're watching this on Facebook, please share this with people that wants to save money on gas, that wants to make sure they're playing financial offense and out beat inflation. Because here's the thing, can you and I control the cost of gas? No. Can you, can you and I control the cost of inflation at 7.9% interest? No. But what you and I can do is control our income. We may not be able to control the costs. Uh, so before I let you go, um, how much longer do you think this type of inflation will last? It's going to be a while. It's, uh, listen, the, the president was asked the other day, hey, where do you think this is going to go? He goes like this, up. And, and guess what President Biden said in the State of the Union address? He said, let's lower the cost. Well, do you have any say-so in lowering the costs? No. Whenever, whenever that's going to happen, if that's going to happen. But what you can do today is control your income by learning the power of the tax codes for the employed and for the employer and how to use your car as a tax deduction. And if you are wondering how to implement this. You want more specific interaction. If you want more specific details, connect with one of our local workshops from coast to coast. We got offices on the East Coast. We got offices in the North, South, West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska. We got people here. The only state that we're not actively in, I'm sorry to say, is Montana. Somebody in Montana, please reach out to We need somebody full-time in Montana to run an operation out of Montana. But outside of that, we got people in Maryland, we got people in Florida, we got people in the, the Northeast, we got people in Chicago, we got people in Atlanta, we got people in, 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 in Texas, we got people in California, Northern California, Oregon, Washington, we got people from coast to coast. If you need somebody to walk you through this, if I can't help you, I will direct you to somebody that can. Somebody that you can be in proximity with to coach you and guide you along the way. So start playing financial offense. If you haven't chosen to make the decision yet, to play financial offense in 2022. All right, so get to those budgeting tips uh, right away because we're going to probably need them. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Matt. Appreciate it. With that being said, guys, that being said, make sure you like our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today.